Hello, welcome to a new series. We are going to play Dinosaur Island. And with me is my son, Jason. You can say hello. Boo! <laughs> and uh, this is Dinosaur Island. So I'm gonna go through real quick all the components and some basic setup, and then we will uh, start play on video two. Okay, so um, first thing you need to understand is I have the expansion pack, totally liquid. So we are playing with the expansion pack. And um, with the totally liquid, you can see here we have miniatures for all the dinosaurs. And this game's insane, the number of miniatures for the dinosaurs that are in the game. And what's crazy is these miniatures are not necessary to play the game. It just makes them, makes them super cool. So uh, we have blue miniatures, which are sea dinosaurs, and yep. then we have the pink ones, which are land dinosaurs. And we can run through all the dinosaurs if you want me to. Uh, maybe we will, maybe we won't. Okay, so we're gonna sort them. So here's how you set up the game. We're doing a two-player game. You can play this solo, but it plays very different solo. It's sort of a beat your own score with a time limit thing. I'm not too thrilled with it. Although they um, they just, the Totally Liquid came with new AI cards and I have not tried those. So when I tell you I'm not real thrilled with it, that was with the base game. Uh, I should maybe look at those. I just, um, my kids love to play this game so much. I never really need to play it solo. Um, okay, first things first, when you're uh, setting up, obviously you need to sort all your pieces. Uh, every player is going to get um, their components, which, let me put this down. It's going to consist of, obviously, your player color and you're going to have, uh, if you have like the extreme edition, you'll have these plastic beakers with a number on them. And just understand that uh, if you did the extreme upgrade because you bought the base game and then upgraded later, they actually sent beakers to everybody, but they have the same numbers on them. If you don't have beakers, you're going to use these cardboard chits instead, which is a one, two, and three on them. And uh, the error on the beakers is that they're all going to say three, and my son's going to show. He has three beakers, but they all say three on them. Uh, Pandasaurus is going to fix that soon. Uh, but anyways, you, you're uh, relegated to using these cardboard tokens. Uh, with the one, two, three. And the one, two, three is extremely important. It's very important for gameplay. So you can't play the game with a three, three, and three, uh, unless you want to cheat. Um, yes, cheat. Okay. Amazing. Am I right? So you're going to have this uh, one phase four. Uh, there's no difference to them. I mean, the dinosaur that you start with is different, but it has the exact same abilities as any other dinosaur. Um, you're going to have your um, your primary color. And I think um, if you flip it over, um, this is actually the white player. So I'm supposed to be using the white pieces, but you know, only that's only for your anal friends. Um, you don't need to do that or worry about it. Um, okay, so the, you're gonna have six black cubes for every player. And those black cubes are gonna go into what looks like a shaded spot on the board. And these black cubes are gonna represent the um, this is your DNA that you have. The left three are basic DNA, the right three are advanced DNA, and these are the maximum DNA you can have. So right now, I can only have, I'm starting the game with zero DNA, and I can only ever have one green, one pink, one yellow DNA. That's it. Now, there are ways to increase your cold storage so you can have more DNA, but when you start the game, that's, that's what you start the game with, those restrictions. Okay, so the rest of your player board is going to have a laboratory and some tool benches and whatnot. And um, there's a bit of a worker placement to this game. So everybody gets, I believe, it's four workers. Uh, let me let me make sure, because one worker goes on the player order. Three of them are out of the game. And, okay, so you start the game with five workers. So you start the game with five workers. Three of them are out of the game. All right, now I have more stuff. So one goes here, this is your threat level, and this is your security level. So we start with a security level of one, 
We have a threat level of one. Why do we have a threat level of one? Because you actually start the game with one dinosaur. So I have this Albert, Alberta Domius, I think is what he pronounced as. Jason, which miniature do you think best represents him? I'm thinking either this one. No. Or... I don't think the starting ones are in here. Should I just use a Triceratops yeah, one? just use a Triceratops. Okay, so here's the other thing, too. You can see I have a bazillion Triceratops. From that's, the start. That's because the first edition game, I only ever bought the base game. I didn't buy the extreme game. And with the base game, you only got one type of dinosaur. And only the extreme versions of the game have all these other different types of dinosaurs. So then when I bought the expansion pack, I kickstarted it. And I said, hey, I'll pay the whatever dollars extra so I can upgrade my base game to the Extreme Edition. And that was an option, and I was very grateful for it. But um, what that means now is I have a bazillion Triceratops, which came with the base game, and now I have all the upgraded stuff too. So anyways, uh, it does not matter what actual physical piece you use. Um, we, of course, do it for fun because... Uh, it's fun to try to match up the dinosaurs, but these are just your your basic level dinosaurs. So we'll just put a triceratops yeah, there. Basic level ones, unless it's like this. But I don't even. Know this <clears throat> That's a pandasaurus. That's the the people who made the game. They made it oh, named okay. the dinosaur after themselves. Okay, <clears throat> all right. So basic things about your dinosaur. Uh, a couple of things you're going to notice is that the dinosaur has. And I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit so you can maybe see it a little bit better. So see how it has, it has two DNA here. That's what that is. And then it has like multicolors to them. What that's trying to tell you is that it takes any two basic DNA to make that dinosaur. And you know it's basic because the multicolors were these three colors instead of those three. If you have these three multicolored, then you know it needs advanced. Any advanced. Sometimes some dinosaurs need exactly this ice blue one or this purple one, or this blue, dark blue one. Um, this particular dinosaur, and Jason's dinosaur is exactly the same. Um, it takes any two basic DNA, okay? Next thing is, is it provides one excitement level to our park, because this is a park. We're gonna have people coming in and- Making us all that money. And paying money to come see our dinosaurs. So it adds one level of excitement. So you take one of your cubes and you put it on the excitement level of one, and that's where we start the game. At the end of the game, it'll give us one victory point for every one of these we have in the park. And then see this little dot? That's the threat level. So these dinosaurs provide a threat level of one, hence the reason we start at one. Now this thing here is a paddock. So it's basically the, you know, the zoo cage for, for the dinosaurs. And this paddock is big enough to hold one dinosaur. So that's the dinosaur we have in there. So as far as other components go, this last cube, uh, we start the game with 10 victory points. And they have a nice shaded 10 on there to remind you of that. Um, these you will use to claim end game objectives. These so you just set these off to the side. So I'm gonna just put them like right here on my board. Here, here. <laughs> these represent when you uh, have a threat level of more than 10, you can put this on. Uh, to show that it's 11 instead of 1. Um, and trust me, we tend to play games that go way beyond that. Um, obviously, if you're using the beakers, you don't even need these. You can put these back in your player bag. So I can do that. Um, one second while I do that. And then the, the labs, uh, you can just... Uh, you can place them anywhere for now. They're, they're just free form. You can put them over here on your company board just to have a place to put them. And then last but not least, uh, every player is going to have one of these. And that's just for when you loop the score. If you look, the score goes up to 50. So after you score 50 points, you flip it to that side. And then if you score 100 points, you flip it to the star side to represent a star. So it's just another marker every player is going to have. Now... <clears throat> We're going to have this turn order board, as you may notice. We're gonna have a phase one board, and then uh, there's gonna be dinosaur tiles. So these are uh, dinosaurs that we can create in the game. And this is an Elasmosaurus. Um, it's a water one. It should be this one. Yep, it'll probably be that one. Go ahead, Jason, show them. 
That's that one. All right, so um, these need to just be shuffled, and then there's uh, respective spots on the board for them. Because you see there's a marine, a large. Now, if you only own the base game, uh, don't worry. Uh, if I'm talking about a component that you don't have, ignore it. Because no rules actually change in the game other than the new components have rules. So um, then uh, you're going to have a phase two board. And if you have the liquid expansion, the phase two board is actually a new one. Uh, it replaces the old. Actually, the phase one board replaces the old. Um, so these are going to both look a little different uh, for you. And, um, and then you're going to have, you have specialists should be shuffled. And then you're going to have what's called attractions. Uh, they'll be shuffled. Yep. And those are going to be roller coasters, uh, food shops and, and merchandise. If you, as, as you can see, we already and then you're going to have lab upgrades, um, that are also going to be randomized, shuffled or whatever. Now, uh, one thing that I do, cause I'm a lazy person is some of these are going to have um, for example, let me see if I can find an example. This one right here. This one says it's for three or more players and it has this little three mm -hmm. plus indicator. So we just gotta, when we draw them, we just gotta take them out. And rather than going through the whole deck, I just take them out as I draw them. Now, you're also going to have these lab upgrades, which are fixed and they have the exact uh, picture on them. You just need one per player because each player can only have one. Uh, there's actually five of them if you have the expansion because this is a five player game with the expansion. Um, the other ones you just set aside. It's just based on the number of players. Okay, so um, as part of your setup, what you're going to do is there's going to be, um, you see there's this two, three, four, five row. They're rows that represent the cost of buying things. So if I want to buy this, it's going to cost me $3. I'm going to buy this, it cost me four, etc. So then what you do to prime the game is you draw one of everything and it goes along those rows and you can see that there's a three plus player one that already came out, like this dino burger here. I need to take that out. And then, yeah, Jason, you can do the same for the labs. And then we do the same thing for the specialists. There's a lot of labs that have um, <laughs> three or more players on them. Okay. Then we do the same thing with the specialists. So every row gets a specialist as well. And um, if you ever see this little symbol on the bottom, looks like a molecule, that's the totally liquid expansion. And so, uh, you can see these two specialists came with the expansion and these two are the base game. So that's, uh, uh, as you're playing and you're like, hey, I never saw that before, that, that might help you out. Okay, so what else do we need to have? So once you do that, your game is actually mostly set up to play. The, um, the money, um, you just need to set aside. And in fact, Jason, feel free to take and make your own bank, like take half of them and, um, He's going to leave me money. Okay, that's good enough. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> okay. And I'll try to mention if something's expansion or not. Um, uh, but let, let me just go through the rest of the things. You're going to have, uh, just set aside, you're going to have paddocks. So these are paddock upgrades. So you can see here, it may be a little hard to see on the camera, but there's uh, actually two spots for dinosaurs. So this is a level two paddock, and then you have a level three paddock, and then there's another whole stack of level four, and they're level four on both sides. Okay, and then you have a level two marine, and then a level three marine paddock as well. And then of course there's a level four. Wait, there's four. no level one? Well, the level ones are right on the, this, see? This comes with a level one right on it. Oh. They all do. Hey, that's a Dunkleosteus. Okay. That's a nice armor. Oh, and, and for your first game, or when you're ready to start, you actually flip the top one. So we're going to have all these revealed. Carnivore. It's a Parasaurolophus. It's a what? A... Yeah, go ahead. Put it on. Just to show everybody what it is. Turn it sideways so it's easier to see. 
I'm gonna set it like that. You can find one for all of them if you'd like. Dimetrodon, here we go. Oh, we got the Spino right off the bat. Isn't that amazing, everyone? Wait, <laughs> That's, am I, I'm reading that right. That's Jason's yeah. favorite dinosaur, the Spinosaurus. And then okay, we have the Dunkelostius, or whatever the heck okay. that is. Is this the panda thing again? No, I, um, it looks like a shark. Can you grab the shark? This is a Megalodon. Okay, then what do you think this is then? I swear, none of these look like it. What have they done with the marine? Well, what about that one there that looks like a, no, that looks like an alligator. Look to the right of the alligator one. No, to the right of the alligator one. Okay, just move your fingers over to the right. Jesus, one more that way. One more of that. Come on, don't be difficult. This way? Yes. <laughs> That's fine, I did, but okay. I feel like this is a Moza, but we're just gonna do it. I don't care, like. Here. While I go through the components, do process of elimination, okay? Yes. All right, so he's gonna go do process elimination. He's a little uh, excited about the miniatures, more than he needs to be, but. That's all right. That's what makes it fun for him. And um, as far as the rest of the stuff goes, um, if you have the expansion, you're going to have this. This is for five-player games only. And what happens with that is it goes down here to show that there's, a, there's another new row. And you would actually put a new row of stuff for people to purchase. Um, and, of course, you don't use that unless it's a five-player game. So that's going to be out of the game. Um, you have... Uh, objectives, short-term, medium-term, and long-term. And in my house, real men play long games. We don't do short and medium nonsense. Not unless we're going to play like six games in a row or something like that. Um, the other thing is, is this game takes a really long time to set up, and these short games can end so quickly um, that it wasn't even worth setting it up. So what you do is... Uh, it's going to be, I believe it's two plus the number of players. So let me make sure of that. Those are always set up things I always forget. They went cheap on the water dinosaurs. Why is that? The, the plesiosaur and the elasmosaur are the same thing. <laughs> That's fine. That's why they gave more than four of them each. But did you find one for everything now? Mm. I get the, this see. one's the donkey. No. Yep. This one's the Mosa. How can that be that? What about that one right there? This one? No, the one, that this one. No, yeah. that's the Corona. You're right. All right, well, whatever you say. They seriously. Okay, whatever you say, shuffle those up and put them back. Let's get the game going here. Okay. Um... Okay, it's a um, number of players plus one, and then the dice are gonna be two per player plus one. So that makes sense? All right, so what you do is you shuffle, 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 and since it's a two player game, we're gonna draw one, two, three of them, and then the rest are out of the game. And just so you know, it's a really, it's a decent stack. So. Every game is going to be different in terms of our objectives. So the objectives for us is we have to fill all zones in our park. We have to build three ride attractions in our park. And we have to have 18 DNA cold storage. Okay, so when you complete an objective, you would just put one of these on. And if somebody else completes that objective in the same round then they also will get eight victory points at the end of the game. But if you're the only one that did it that round, then that objective is locked, and it's yours and only yours, and nobody else gets to claim it. Um, the game ends when all but one of the objectives are accomplished. So in our case, as soon as two of these are done, the, that's the, that triggers the last round of the game. So whatever the current round is, um, that'll be the final round of the game. So... It can be pretty quick with a two-player game. When you have like a five-player game, you're going to have six of these suckers out there. It's pretty, um, you get some nice long games when you play that one. Okay, next, 
is the plot twist. So we have plot twist cards, and normally they are two per game. But with the expansion pack, they changed it to say, you can just have whatever you want, but a minimum of two. So what do these cards do? These cards are game-breaking cards, and um, they, they completely alter the rules of the game sometimes. And so uh, there's quite a nice stack. You can play many games and never get the same ones twice. So I'm just gonna select one and two, and let's see what we get. And we can actually have like, you can put five of them in if you want. Um, the rules are fine with whatever you choose to do. So with that being said, we have these DNA dice. You can see there's a big long line of them. Uh, since it's a two player game, we're gonna get two per player plus one. So we're gonna get five of them. So which five? It's supposed to be random. So I'm just gonna roll this die. So let's see. Uh, I got a three, so we're gonna go one, two, three. Three, one, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four. Five, one, two, three, four, five. And six, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's five dice. So all the other dice are out of our game. And that also adds a lot of variety because each die is very different from the other. So there's no two dice that are the same. Um, uh, a lot of the stuff that's on the dice is gonna be the same, but everyone sometimes will have a, a different flavor to them. And so um, that's something to, uh, you know, just add a little bit of a change to your game. So for example, this die has a free paddock on it. I don't think there's any other die that does. There might be, I, I never sat down and analyzed them, but that free paddock is unique. And uh, when you get one of those, um, you can actually build a paddock for free if you were to take that die. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself because I haven't explained how dice work. But anyways, you just set these aside. These will be used in the game. And um, can you at least put it back until turn I'm one? I'm just making sure. I'm, he has to have a nice spot. All right. All right. Now, there's three other dice. This die is a threat die, and it's only used with a certain plot twist. So there's a lot of components in this game that you're not gonna get unless the plot twist comes out. So let's look at our plot twist, see what we get. The first plot twist is all DNA storage limits are increased by one, and it's just a game setup thing. So what we do, Jason, is all of our uh, black cubes are going up by one, and that's just part of the plot twist. That's not normally how you play the game, but that's what the plot twist just did. And I like that. Yes, we do like that plot twist. And, and this one, by the way, is just a setup thing, so it's actually out of the game. So there's no need to keep it uh, around. It's just done. And then this one, once per round, each player may increase their excitement level by one if they assign a scientist to increase cold storage limits. So we haven't explained how that works, but, but the cold storage action is already a decent action by itself. But now if we do the cold storage action, we get to increase our excitement level by one. And I know you might be wondering, well, what does that do? Um, remember, excitement level is what attracts people to come to your park. So it means more money. Yeah, it's more money, more everything. So these dice are going to be out. This is a threat die. This is an income die. And this is a uh, special DNA die. Um, all three of them are pretty awesome in their own right. This one, of course, is awful because it makes uh, your park have a lot of problems with security. Uh, this one helps us to have more money in the game. And this one, of course, helps people to make more dinosaurs because you can get DNA a lot easier. They are all out of the game. So uh, we won't see any of those in this particular game. Now, some people could say, but I love the income die. And that's the reason why the rules say you can just add more plot twists. And you can even pick which ones you want to add. So we could say, hey, every game we play, we're going to make sure the income die is there because we just think money's tight in this game. And then you can just add it. And the income die can be just another die that's added in addition to the other ones. Okay, so um, that explains those. And we're actually, if you were playing the base game, this is all you need for setup. Uh, now with the uh, expansion pack, we have some new things. So the first one is we have these module selector cards. And what this just shows is these are all the things in the expansion pack. And, it's, and you can like shuffle them and say, we're only gonna do two of them. 
But in my case, we're doing all of them, so I'm not worrying about it, so those go back to the game box. The next thing are the executives. So we're gonna draw one for Flair. So we're gonna draw two executives, and then we're gonna do what's called a snake draft to draft these executives. And they all have superpowers that the players get. And these are drastically different from each other. And uh, since Jason is gonna go first, I actually get first pick on these. And so uh, I'll explain the rules real quick and then I'll come back to explain what these are. Um, and so I'm just gonna put them over here. So Jason, we'll just make room over here next to all this stuff. So we have a money bags executive and we have a boss hog executive. And then there's these yellow tokens and those represent our executives. So each player gets to pick one. So for example, I can pick the one that looks like it's from Jurassic Park. And Jason, you can pick whichever one you'd like. Uh, the icon that you pick, this is like Monopoly. You can be the thimble or the, the, the wagon or whatever. It doesn't matter. Wait, isn't this a symbol from like one of the dudes in Japan? Just pick one, please. I feel like it is. Okay, so you pick one that looked just like mine. <laughs> I'm a god. Well, yeah, that's the guy from Jurassic Park. Really? Yeah. Oh, him. Him and... Okay. Wait, no. So are you done? Yeah, that's the one I thought you were going to pick. <laughs> He picked one where the executive is riding on the back of a stegosaurus. Okay. <laughs> you suck at your dinosaur a Triceratops. <laughs> so whatever ones aren't picked, they're out of the game. Okay, another thing um, that's in the game are these PR cards. So uh, you give two to each player. And they are secret cards. So here you go. And then I get two secret cards as well, okay? Um, the players, of course, get to look at them, uh, but what's, what's happening with those is that um, uh, they're going to, well, well, I'll just show you mine. Um, these are end game scoring conditions. And at the end of the game, I get to pick one of these and all players in the game are gonna score points based on whichever one I pick. And I can wait until the end of the game to, to decide which one I'm going to pick. Okay? So I can be shooting for one and, and, or shooting for the other, but I can also watch to see what he does. And he's not allowed to know what they are. And, um, and so it's a nice end game scoring. Some people hate this kind of mechanic because then you can't control the game. Um, I sort of like it. It's, it makes it a lot of fun to me. They make this game diverse so that each game you don't... Do the same thing, so it doesn't make it boring when you play Yeah, so as my son was trying to say, uh, it makes it so you don't play each game the exact same way, and uh, I agree with him 100%. All right, so the next thing you have, and I'm shuffling them off camera here, are these blueprint cards. So we give two of these to each player, and actually it might even be three. I think it might be three. It doesn't matter. You're only picking one. Um, you can... Dish out six to each player, but you're only picking one, and you have to pick it now. Um, I can explain the rules further before we uh, pick which one we're going to use. But what these are is these are also secret, but these are blueprints. And if you'll notice, they are showing a pattern for how to build your park. So the park has this little L shape that's hard-coded in, and then we're going to build attractions on the rest of the park. So if I were to pick this one, for example... I would put two merchandise stalls in these top two spots. I would have to have an herbivore dinosaur here, a small, small carnivore here, and an herbivore down in the bottom I don't left. Like any of these. And so um, the one thing that's important, Jason, because I know this is a new game to you, the expansion is at least, the marine dinosaurs uh, count as a wild card. They count as anything. So if you put the marine dinosaurs where an herbivore should have gone, it counts towards your blueprint. So if you fill in the entire park all the way, you get like 27 points. If you get all but one, you get like 22, right? I don't know, there's a chart. But um, you score points at the end of the game if you can build your park to match your blueprint. Okay, so you don't have to do it. You can just say, screw that. I'm not doing that, okay? 
Um, but you do get points for your, your uh, blueprint if you do that. <laughs> so, um, and then last but not least, uh, there's facilities. Actually, it's not even last. There's more stuff. But uh, there's facilities. So we're going to draw two, one per player. And I'm just going to take two of them, and we're going to put them over on the side. The rest are out of the game. So the facilities are going to go here. So the facilities, I think, is worth showing you guys. Some of the facilities are like a casino or a petting zoo um, or the Mega Rex um, Parks and Recs. Uh, Fantasy Island, and you have an archipelago, and then you even have an incubator. Talking so, about the Mega Rex, if we look behind us right now, we find the Mega Rex in its natural habitat. Yeah, she is quite the Mega Rex. Okay, so those are also going to be part of the snake draft. And what those are is those are your executive, like, unique thing in your park. So the Mega Rex, for example, uses this particular miniature. And so what you're doing in your park, if you had the Mega Rex exhibit, is you would, if you uh, create the Mega Rex for your park, he uh, brings in a ton of uh, visitors. His excitement level is super through the roof, but so is his threat level. So you have to have really high security to keep him at bay. So that's one example. The, um, the petting zoo uh, uses these little baby dinosaurs. So you can see here we have like little baby, baby um, pteranodons, etc. And then the incubator uses these, these eggs. So let me go ahead and open. We actually do have to open it because we drew the goat pen. So you can see here I have some eggs. And these are little uh, plastic goats that we got. You know, and there's a little baby... T-Rex, um, and baby Velociraptor, and baby Triceratops, etc. So the babies are used for the petting zoo. The eggs are used for the incubator. And of course, uh, the incubator and the petting zoo are not in this particular game. So you can just put those out. The goats, though, are in. It's so, delicious. So yes, we have goat pen. And so I'm just going to grab these and put them over on the executive board. So um, you also have extra meeples. Uh, you don't need them unless you drew the right plot twist. So you have extra meeples that are above and beyond what you normally need in the game. Um, there are cardboard money. Don't need it because we got... We got the bling money. Um, there are a whole bunch of blank things, so you can make your own pieces to the game. There's also a bunch of 90s stuff, like Fart Knocker and Oh Snap and uh, things like that. And Booyah. And Those are just there for fun. They're also out of the game. The um, uh, We do have some extra red and green cubes. Uh, don't need them. They're out of the game. We do have Fantasy Wild Tiles, which we might need. Um, and then there's cardboard goats and baby dinosaurs and eggs, but we don't need any of those. So um, I'm going to head and uh, I'm going to stop here at 33. I will start up with a quick rundown of the rules, and we will actually start gameplay on video three. So thank you very much.